Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. As we promised before the break that the next lesson which we are going to be looking at is Dars uh, Hadith is a lesson in Hadith about some manners and about some akhlaq. And because we've been looking at the topic of marriage and nikah and one of the produce of marriage and nikah is children so i thought that i'll begin the first hadith by looking at a hadith regarding the virtues of children and how we should treat them and how we should be kind to them was closer was good now, so should start again? Start if, you, if you if you want, I, I tell it directly or I can start again. <laughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil alamin. Was salatu was salam. Wala sayyid al shifi al anbiya wal mursalin. Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in amma baad. As I was mentioning before the break, that the next lesson which we are going to start is the lesson of hadith a darsi hadith and because we have just been looking at the topic of nikah and marriage and one of the produce of nikah and marriage is children so i thought that i'll begin the first hadith of the dars by looking at the importance and the virtues of having affection and love towards children Inizieremo questa nuova lettura parlando dell'argomento dei figli, quindi come trattarli, come comportarsi con loro. Now just go over the Arabic of the first hadith. The first hadith narrated by Khawla bint Hakim radiyallahu ta'ala anha she says qalat kharaja rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam zata yawmin wa huwa muhtadinun ahada ibnay ibnatihi that once rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam he left his house one day whilst he was carrying one of his daughters wahuwa muhtadinun means carrying one of his daughters i.e. one of his daughters children sorry either has a hasan or hussein radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma then rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam went on to say innakum indeed you i.e. you meaning parents la tubakhilun you become stingy you become miser, stingy, bakhil. What to jabbibun? To jabbibun means that you become cowards. Cowards meaning like you become frightened or scared. You don't want to say anything. Then he goes on to say, what to jihilun? And you become ignorant. Wa inna kum la min reyhanillah. However, they, i.e. the children, are the flowers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. SubhanAllah. And the meaning of this hadith is that when we have children, what happens is that it makes parents into stingy people. Oh, I don't want to waste any money. Uh, my child, how am I going to look after them? So naturally, parents, they become a bit more stingier when they have children. Stingy meaning bakhi, like they don't want to spend sadqa too much because... They think, oh, I'd rather use this money to buy clothes for my children, buy shoes for my children, you know, education for my children. 
they also become coward. Now, what does coward mean? It means there that you don't want to say anything. So sometimes it happens, your child does something and you don't want to say anything to them. Because children, oh love, you don't want to get them upset, you don't want to hurt them. What tujilun means sometimes a father becomes ignorant <clears throat> regarding his children. In other words, if his child does something, he'll just like turn a blind eye to it. Oh, it doesn't matter. If somebody else does, he goes, oh, why do you do that for? It's haram. Well, when his own children do it, uh, he doesn't look at it. And there's so many examples where sometimes our children, sons, daughters, they do something which is wrong, but we don't actually, you know, seize them. We don't actually get them in trouble for that. But then subhanAllah, Prophet then finishes off the hadith by saying, وَإِنَّكُمْ لَمِنْ رَيْحَانِ اللَّهِ Rayhan means flower. So even though children makes us stingy, they make us cowards, they make us ignorant, but khair, children are the flowers of Allah. In other words, even then we still love them. Same way flower, you will love it. The smell, you like it. The fragrance, you like it. Even though there's other things going on in life, but a flower, you need to come home, or when you see a flower, subhanAllah, nice smell. So what this hadith is telling us that children, you know, they'll make us go through a lot of difficulties in life. But at the end of the day, we love them. And this is what Prophet ﷺ was trying to say from this hadith, having love for children. The Sheikh has read a hadith, Sunan Tirmidhi. From the Sunan of Tirmidhi, where the Prophet ﷺ says that the love that is just to give to their children. Um, il profeta Sallam indica il fatto che i genitori nei confronti dei figli diventano um, diciamo come si dice tirchi in italiano, cioè praticamente non nei confronti dei figli ma a favore dei figli, cioè a causa della loro presenza non vogliono spendere soldi per poter concedere loro uh, dei vestiti o del cibo o quant'altro, uh, rischiano di diventare uh, codardi a causa loro, nel senso che magari eh, perché il figlio fa qualcosa, il genitore non gli dice niente, eh, non si permette di dirgli nulla, però se vede il figlio di qualcun altro che fa la stessa cosa, subito punta il dito e dice, ah, vedi, questa qua è una cosa che non va bene. Oppure rischiano di diventare ignoranti, nel senso che vedono una cosa che non va bene nel figlio e si girano dicendo, sì, sì, ma non fa niente, questo non è una cosa importante. E il profeta Salam indica il fatto di amarli eh, nonostante queste, queste tre caratteristiche che investono il genitore quando ha dei figli perché dice che i figli sono i fiori di Allah questa è, è l'espressione con, con il quale termina il hadith del profeta sallallahu alaihi wasallam another hadith which I'm going to mention but this is regarding daughters because unfortunately what happens sometimes in some cultures that uh, everybody, father, mother, they always like the son and they don't like daughters. Daughters are thing to be like uh, too much headache. But we're going to look at a hadith here the importance of looking after, spending on your daughters in particular. Now, the hadith again, a hadith from Surah Tirmizi narrated by Anabi Sa'id al Khudri. قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من كانت له ثلاث بنات أو ثلاث أخوات أو ابنتان أو أختان that whosoever has three daughters or three sisters or two daughters or two sisters فأحسن صحبتهن and he makes their صحبة their welcoming, their companionship good. In other words, father looks after them properly. The father fears Allah regarding them. Subhanallah. For the father, Al Jannatu is Jannah and is paradise. Allah. Subhanallah. So if somebody has three daughters or even two daughters, and he looks after them. Looks after them meaning spends on them, be kind to them, does justice adal between sons and daughters. So what did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? Falahu al-Jannah for the father is 
paradise and his Jannah. Eh, a proposito del fatto che in alcune società il figlio maschio è più desiderato e amato della figlia femmina, eh, lo Sheikh ha appena letto un Andis del profeta Salvador Sadr molto bello dove invece si parla delle figlie, delle figlie femmine. E dice chiunque fra di voi abbia eh, tre figlie femmine o tre sorelle o due figlie femmine oppure due sorelle e gli dia loro una, eh, una buona compagnia inteso come una giusta educazione, eh, una giusta presenza al loro fianco, eh, per lui è, è scritto il paradiso, gli sarà concesso il paradiso a favore di questa, di questa educazione buona che eh, avrà fatto nei loro confronti. Di, questo, di questa gestione anche giusta che avrà fatto nei loro confronti, del giudicare correttamente, adeguamente tra i figli, eh, dell'essere presente e del temere, del temere Allah in esse, cioè del temere Allah nel comportamento che eh, il genitore impartisce a queste figlie. Now, there's another point which I want to mention about daughters. Unfortunately, this was the practice of the people from the days of ignorance as all of you know that whenever they would have a daughter they would bury their daughter alive so unfortunately this was like you could say this one of the uh, the practices of the mushriks and the idols of idolaters of Mecca that they hated daughters and they would not like daughters at all I'm just going to mention a Quranic verse and the tafsir of this Quranic verse is mentioned in uh, in the Holy Quran Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Yahabu liman yasha'u inatha wa yahabu liman yasha'u dhukur Which means Allah gives to whoever he wants inath, i.e. daughters Wa yahabu liman yasha'u dhukur And he gives to whoever he wants boys a great companion whose name was Qatada, he does the seal of this ayat, ayat e karima And he says that that household who has a daughter as a first child, that household is full of barakah and full of blessings. Subhanallah. So if you have the first daughter, first daughter, was the first child daughter, mashallah. So, mashallah, even myself as well, <laughs> not yet, inshallah, for Brother Tanim. But, uh, inshallah, if you have a daughter first, then that means that there's a barakah in the household. And like myself and Brother, we've got two daughters, so that's like nurun ala nur. Allah, Allah. Lo Sheikh ha citato un ayah del Corano che dice Allah concede femmine a chi vuole, concede maschi a chi vuole. Eh, Qatada, eh, rahimahullah, eh, un compagno del profeta, ha fatto il tafsir di questo, eh, di questo versetto coranico dicendo che ehm, quando Allah concede in una casa la presenza eh, come prima figlia di una figlia femmina eh, questa è l'indicazione che quella casa è piena della baraka di Allah e della sua luce uh, The next Uh, hadith uh, this is just generally just being kind and merciful to children uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said laysa minna man lam yarham sagheerana wa lam yuakkir kabeerana which means that he's not from us i.e. he's not a true muslim a true believer who does not shower his mercy, rahmah, on the sabir, on the children, and he does not, you know, show any respect to the elders. Now, there's two parts of this hadith, inshallah. One is telling us that we should be kind to children, so those who are sibian, those who are children. It doesn't have to be our children, by the way, somebody else's children. It doesn't matter, you still be kind to them. You know, alhamdulillah, like, you know, some, like today, mashallah, what I saw from you brothers here, you know, when, uh, you know, Yusuf's son came and so on, you know, mashallah, like, you know, showing that love and affection, picking the Hafsa and so on, you know, these things comes under the cities. Because what we could have done, we could have just left a baby crying there, 
Alhamdulillah, you picked the baby up, looked after the baby and so on. So that comes under Yarham Sabirana. But also at the same time, you should show respect to your elders as well. And I'll just mention a hadith about elders. Il profeta sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ha detto non è dei nostri chi non mostra misericordia per i nostri piccoli e non rispetta i nostri anziani. Um, fa parte dei, dei segni del musulmano il fatto di eh, quando si vede un bambino che sia il proprio o che non sia il proprio figlio di mostrargli diciamo, amore e misericordia um, lo sheikh ha fatto l'esempio di quello che è accaduto proprio oggi alhamdulillah in cui eh, la presenza eh, tra, sia tra i fratelli che anche tra le sorelle di Hafza della figlia del fratello Yusuf ehm, ha fatto sì che questa bambina fosse tenuta in carico anche se momentaneamente con amore con dedizione da tutte le persone che potevano tenerla per cui diciamo eh, questo rientra all'interno degli insegnamenti di questo hadith e, adesso lo Sheikh sta cercando eh, il, diciamo, il tafsir, la spiegazione di ciò che riguarda la seconda parte del hadith ovvero il fatto di rispettare i nostri anziani now the hadith which I want to mention about looking after elder people because uh... Unfortunately, sometimes we just don't look after our older people. Our parents, may Allah forbid, sometimes we don't look after them even though they're old. Sometimes old people just generally we see in the mosque or outside, we don't look after them. Now, it is mentioned in the Quran, Allah says, Tilka al-ayyamu nudawiluha bayna nas Which means that whatever you do, that will come upon you what goes around comes around meaning what you do what it will come to you as well so if you do something good inshallah so just an example if you help someone then inshallah allah will make things happen where you will be helped if you are bad to someone what will happen is a time will come when somebody will be bad to you that's how allah's deen and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's laws and sharia works now what I'm trying to say is that it is mentioned in a hadith that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that if you look after an old person when you become old Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allocate or find someone who will look after you SubhanAllah If you look after old people because remember, we, we're going to go old one day, we're not going to stay young, we're going to go old. So what will happen is that some of, somebody Allah will allocate to then look after us when we reach old age. So it's a great thawab in looking after old people as well. Not just like looking after young children, but those who are old, those who are, you know, sheikhun, faniyun, like a bit very, very old and so on, extreme old age. We should try to look after them and then we'll get thawab for that as well. Eh, lo Sheikh ha ricordato un'area del Corano eh, attraverso la quale si capisce chiaramente che ciò che noi compiamo eh, nella vita, eh, sempre all'interno della vita terrena ci ritorna indietro in qualche modo. No? Un po' il concetto di, eh, eh, del fatto di, 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 di fare qualcosa e vedersela, vedersela tornare nella stessa forma magari dopo anni, dopo anni, dopo anni. No? Eh, qua in Italia viene volgarmente chiamato karma, prendendo fuori un un termine extra islamico per così dire ed è una cosa molto importante molto reale lo Sheikh l'ha citata perché e ha citato anche un altro hadith del profeta dove il profeta dice che così come tu ti guardi oggi i tuoi anziani così verrai guardato da anziano cioè nello stesso modo in cui ti prendi cura dei tuoi anziani nello stesso modo Allah porrà al tuo fianco persone che si prenderanno cura di te Ehm, ha citato questa cosa perché nell'adith eh, precedente dove il profeta Salam dice che non è dei nostri chi non mostra misericordia per i nostri figli e non mostra eh, attenzione per i nostri anziani, rispetto per i nostri anziani eh, il profeta ha paragonato quindi eh, l'amore eh, dei figli ha paragonato la misericordia che bisogna avere per i bambini quindi il, il presente per così dire con quello che poi è in realtà il futuro di tutti noi cioè l'anzianità che va vista in quest'ottica 
che fa sempre parte della vita familiare, che va vista con l'ottica di, eh, di essere rispettata, di essere apprezzata e mantenuta e eh, come dire, curata, curata fino a che la persona non viene ripresa da là, perché nello stesso modo in cui noi ehm, facciamo nei confronti di queste persone anziane, nello stesso modo Allah farà in modo che persone facciano nei nostri confronti. Now the, the next hadith which we are going to look at is a hadith which I kind of uh, mentioned before as well about the importance of helping someone. Now this hadith narrated by Abi Huraira al-Anhu that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said Man nafasa an muslimin kurbatan min kurabi dunya نَفَّسَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ كُرْبَةً مِنْ كُرَبِي يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ So one of the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that whosoever removes a kurba kurba means a difficulty from amongst the difficulties of this world from a Muslim brother Allah will remove a difficulty from you in the hereafter So in other words the first part of the hadith is saying that You say somebody was in difficulty outside, you helped him, you know, he could have been financially in difficulty or just like, you know, just natural difficulty, whatever, he had some problems at home with his wife, you went and sorted it out, he had some problems with his uh, business partner in the shop, he then went and you went and sorted out. So many problems people go through in life because dunya is Daru Sabab, as you know, we go through trials and difficulties and tribulations. When you went and sorted it out, the Hadith of Mubarakah says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove a difficulty from you in the hereafter. Is the first part there? The so. Sheikh ha citato un altro Hadith che riguarda un argomento simile a quello trattato adesso, dove uh, Allah dice, Allah promette a chiunque tolga un peso, tolga una difficoltà a un fratello in questa vita, Allah gliene toglierà una nell'altra vita, nell'Akhera. Anzi, ah, sì, Yumul Qiyama, scusate, toglierà un peso in Yumul Qiyama. Quindi eh, questo è molto importante, nel senso lo Sheikh ha detto, eh, pensate magari a quante, a quante volte una persona può aiutarne un'altra eh, nella, nei problemi della sua vita terrena, nella vita terrena si hanno problemi di infinite nature di ogni tipo e genere eh, nel business, nella famiglia, eh, con, eh, con degli amici o con dei parenti, nel momento in cui ho di salute anche di qualunque genere e questo sicuramente rientra nella descrizione del comportamento che si ha nei confronti degli anziani, nel momento in cui tu aiuti questa persona anziana perché ha dei problemi di salute, questo fratello perché ha dei problemi economici o di famiglia e quant'altro, Allah ti toglierà a te un peso in Yumul Qiyam, quando, ci sarà, quando Allah sarà presente di fronte a noi, quando lo potremo vedere, quando verremo giudicati, un giorno terribile, per cui poter avere un peso in meno per un'azione buona che si è fatta nei confronti dei, eh, dei nostri anziani o... Ehm, nei confronti dei nostri fratelli o delle nostre sorelle è sicuramente uno degli enormi fadli che Allah ci ha concesso in un'Islam. Now the next part of the hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says Wa mai yassara ala mu'asilin fi dunya yassara allahu alayhi fi dunya wal akhira That whosoever is light on a bankrupt person Bankrupt means like someone who owes you money So he's supposed to have paid you today But you say, okay, all right, don't pay today, pay next week. You let him off. You say, okay, next week pay, two weeks later you pay. You do a bit of leniency on him, you serve on him. So he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, inshallah ta'ala, will be lenient and will be easy upon you in the hereafter. Then the next part, which is very important. وَمَنْ سَتَرَ عَلَى مُسْلِمٍ فِي الدُّنْيَا سَتَرَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ Subhanallah. That if you conceal a sin of a Muslim, Allah will conceal a sin from you in the hereafter. What does that mean? Just say for example, I know that Abdullah here for argument's sake, he did a sin. Just say he did zina. For argument, I know that. But what I do, I conceal that sin. I don't go and tell anyone. 
Or I know Abdullah, say for example, did something bad and haram, but I conceal that. Conceal meaning I hide. Don't tell anyone. I just say, okay, I may speak to Abdullah, say, look, you do Tawbah, but I don't tell anybody else. I don't tell Brother Tanim here. I don't tell yourself here. Basically, I just keep it within myself. So the hadith then goes on to explain that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will conceal your sin in this world and in the hereafter. SubhanAllah. Because yeah. when you look at it, we're not perfect. We commit sins. That I'm sure we probably commit more sins than this brother Abdullah here. So you then try to expose his sins. Allah the Almighty will expose your sins in front of everyone. Awesome. Allah will then say that no Mufti Saab you're not a good person you expose this sin but you're not a good person and Allah will expose my fault and my sins to everyone if Allah wanted to and that goes for everyone so if we see someone doing bad we should just speak to him telling him look you did something bad do Tawbah repent istighfar but there's no need for us to advertise you know tell go on to Facebook go on to internet and tell oh so and so committed this sin that is haram, that is unlawful, and the benefit of it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will you know conceal and hide your sins, inshallah ta'ala, in the hereafter. La Dith continua dicendo che chiunque dilazionerà un prestito a qualcun altro, Allah eh, sa, si comporterà nello stesso modo con lui, dilazionerà nei suoi confronti eh, eventualmente una, la pena di un peccato. Eh, non non gli verrà dato diciamo subito il, eh, la punizione per quello che sono i propri peccati e la DIF continua dicendo ehm, qual è la seconda parte della hadith? Yeah, no, okay. se, eh, se tu copri i peccati di un tuo fratello Allah li coprirà per te nell'altra vita quindi questo ci fa sempre intendere come Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala si comporti nei confronti dell'uomo così come l'uomo si è comportato nei confronti delle creature che Allah gli ha messo vicino. Solo nell'altra vita o anche in questa? Uh, only, only in this life, uh, in the hereafter or already in, in, in this life? In this world, that's what yeah. Anche in questo? Fit dunia wal akhira. Fit dunia wal akhira. Yeah, in this world, in the hereafter. In entrambi i mondi, in entrambi i mondi. In this world, you see. In entrambi i mondi, se tu copri i tuoi peccati, se tu fai sutra in poche parole, se tu copri i peccati di un tuo fratello, quindi lui magari gli dai, gli dai una nasiha, un consiglio, cerchi di riportarlo sulla realtà, via se lo vedi peccare, ma nascondi agli occhi delle altre persone il suo peccato, non lo vai a, a, a sparlare di lui sui social network o non lo dici ad altre persone, eccetera, eccetera. Allah farà in modo che questo ti verrà restituito, nello stesso modo come abbiamo detto prima degli hadith precedenti ti verrà restituito in che modo? da lui stesso, dalla sua natale sia in questo modo che nell'altro verranno coperti i tuoi peccati e ti verrà data comunque una via di, di purificazione perché tu nel, nel cance- l'hadith parla di cancellare i peccati di un fratello lo sheikh ha detto come si cancellano i peccati di un fratello eh, si cancellano consigliandolo aiutandolo quando vedi che fa il peccato e coprendo il suo peccato agli occhi degli altri quindi questo verrà fatto da Allah direttamente nei tuoi confronti. Quindi Allah ti fa in modo che nessuno sappia che tu abbia commesso il peccato e al tempo stesso ti concede una via di salvezza. E questa è una, è una benedizione enorme. Alhamdulillah. In the last part of the hadith, inshallah, Wallahu fi awni al-abd ma kan abdu fi awni aqihi. Subhanallah, which means Allah will be helping the servant as long as the servant is in the helping of another brother. So if I'm inshallah helping brother Yasin here, inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always continue helping me. If I'm helping Abdullah here, Allah will always continue helping me. If I'm helping say brother Yusuf, then Allah will always continue to help me. So what this hadith is trying to encourage is to help, you know, Ta'awun, you know, helping everyone, you know, brothers, sisters, whatever, even sisters as well, you know, helping other sisters, you know, uh, newly converted sisters, you know, uh, just say sisters, sorry, helping newly converted sisters, because sometimes what happens, some sisters, they convert to Islam, but they don't have any help or support, and after a while, then they go back to the old deen and the old religion again. 
So what you should realize is that helping, again, this thing is also disappeared from us Muslims helping someone because we always think about ourselves. But you should try to help people, obviously within the limits of the Sharia, the boundaries of the Sharia, help people, inshallah. And what will happen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also help you as well. Uh, we leave it there for now because it's obviously Salatul Asr soon. Inshallah, after Salatul Asr, we will then make a start on the next section. And there are some rules just for women and so on in terms of their tahara, in terms of their beautification. Inshallah, that will continue after Salatul Asr, uh, say approximately 4.15. Uh, 4 so during that time, if sisters, they want to do a bit of tajweed, then they can also do so as well. Uh, the deep termina.